Thank you for your interest in the MCAT Intensive Review. I'm Dr. Ogan Garel. I want to share with you a little bit about the mission of the MCAT Intensive Review. And there's four components to that mission. First and foremost, of course, is to help you succeed on the MCAT. Some would say ace the exam. Obviously, that's very important. And because the MCAT is a knowledge-based test, you have to know your stuff. This course really provides you with a framework to efficiently and comprehensively review all that material to uh, increase the potential for your success. The second mission is to develop a way of thinking, to encourage a way of thinking, I should say. And I'll give you some background behind that. One of the well understood features of residency training is this concept that as you go through all this residency training, you're training to be an independent physician. There's a point in that training when you kind of realize you integrate all that understanding, knowledge, intuition, and you know when patients are sick or when they're not sick. And when we say we're not, they're not sick, that doesn't mean you don't care about them, but that there are some patients that, gosh, something is really wrong and we have to intervene, whether it be surgically, medically, etc. And there's some patients where, well, maybe something is not perfect, but they're getting better or it's not a problem. That sick, not sick divide is a very interesting concept in the training of a physician, in what it means to be a physician. And so we're trying to impart in some way that way of thinking in the MCAT intensive review. Not so much to teach you how to recognize that, that's medical school and residency, but concepts such as the difference between a linear and a nonlinear relationship. The difference between discrete and continuous phenomena discrete phenomena like in quantum mechanics, continuous like in a continuous electromagnetic wave, the difference between organic and inorganic chemistry, and inorganic and inorganic reactions, uh, how it works with a nucleophilic substitution in an organic reaction or a transition metal reaction, the difference between direct and inverse relationships in mathematics, a direct relationship where something doubles the the result of that also doubles. An inverse relationship, if a certain variable increases, the output variable decreases. In physics, for example, statics and dynamics. Dynamics is a situation where there is accelerated motion. Statics is when there is no acceleration, although the velocity may be constant. In biology, the sympathetic nervous system, dominated by adrenaline, versus the parasympathetic nervous system, dominated by acetylcholine. Again, to be able to make those judgments, to understand those dichotomies, to make decisions, that's what it means to be a doctor. So that way of thinking is a mission of the MCAT Intensive Review, and in some small way to impart some of those fundamental understanding. Of course, the third mission is related to that. This material is the bedrock of scientific medicine. The better you learn this material, the better a doctor you will be. We're not going to teach you all about bedside matter. We're not going to teach you all about some of the subtle aspects of being a physician, the practical aspects of being a physician. We're not teaching you medical school, but we're teaching you the groundwork, the truly important groundwork that sets the stage for success as a practitioner of the scientific basis of medicine. The fourth and final goal of the MCAT Intensive Review is its international context. Medicine, taking care of human beings, is truly universal uh, endeavor. Of course, there are different cultural manifestations of medicine, there are different medical systems. So there are differences in how medicine is practiced, even though we're all dealing with the same human beings. But where in the training, medicine is almost universally equivalent worldwide, is in the pre-medical sciences. Physics is physics. F equals MA, Newton's second law, is pretty much the same in the United States, Europe, Asia, Africa, all seven continents. Some of you may be familiar with Avicenna, that's the anglicized name for Ibn Sina. He was a prominent Islamic physician, philosopher, around 1000 AD, and widely regarded as the father of modern medicine. Now, you might say uh, you heard about Hippocrates and Galen, etc. We'll talk about how that fits in. But as I mentioned, uh, Avicenna, Ibn Sina, the uh, Central Asian Islamic physician, philosopher, has been regarded as the father of modern medicine. In fact, he wrote the 14-volume canon of medicine, Canon of Medicine, which was the standard medical text in Europe until the 18th century. During the Dark Ages, 
the work of Hippocrates and Galen, the great ancient Greek physicians that started the concepts of scientific medicine, were lost. Europe did not have, did not even know these uh, great thinkers existed. It is through this connection to Avicenna that the European Western scientific basis of medicine, which is of course practiced throughout the world, has been passed on to us from Hippocrates and Galen. So in terms of this fourth mission, the international worldwide uh, reach of the MCAT Intensive Review, in some small measure, United States medicine, which is widely regarded as very technologically advanced and at the pinnacle of achievement in modern medicine, we have the opportunity to share with our common humanity that culture of scientific medicine, return the favor as it were. So whether you're a student in the United States studying for the MCAT or you're a student in any one of the six continents, seven continents even in the world watching this and studying from this, you're part of a shared tradition of scientific medicine that takes physics, chemistry, organic chemistry, biology, all of these subjects that are universal worldwide and applies them ultimately to the benefit of patients. As you progress in your careers and become not only future doctors but doctors, someday you'll also have the opportunity to pass along that torch. In fact, I was told when I was training that one of the obligations of a physician is not just to take care of patients, but ultimately to teach future physicians. And so we're all in this together. Good luck and thank you very much. Thank you.